the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, give ear to our prayers and lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I will begin uh, the introduction. Uh, actually, I am going to go over to the pulpit. Luther Bear, what do you have here? A book of Christmas carols. Luther Bear, that's not what we're doing today. I know, sometimes in the past on Special Music Sunday in December, we do Christmas music, but today we are going to be doing Advent music. Yes, that music that lifts up preparing for our Lord's coming, remembering his coming at Bethlehem at Christmas and when he will come again. But this is a good reminder for me to let people know that on Christmas Eve, we will be singing carols uh, Saturday at 730, December 24th. And guess what? Christmas Day is a Sunday. And we're going to be singing lessons and Christmas carols on Christmas Day this year, too. So, yep. That was a good reminder that we are going to sing plenty of Christmas carols, but today is something very special. Today, we are going to explore the rich history and scriptural background of well-known and some lesser-known Advent hymns of the Christian church. We recognize how God blessed faithful men and women to write and to translate songs of the biblical message of the call to prepare for the Messiah. May we be encouraged by the witness of those who have gone before us serving the Lord in challenging times, maybe as we hear even more challenging than ours today. Isaiah chapter 7, beginning at the 10th verse. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. From Matthew chapter 1, beginning at the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, 
He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The hymn, the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, finds its origin in, medie in the medieval Roman <laughs> church and possibly earlier. It began as a series of antiphons, short statements sung at the beginning of the psalm or Magnificat at Vespers during the Advent season. Each of these antiphons greets the Savior with one of the many titles ascribed to him in the scriptures. Emmanuel, Lord of Might, Rod of Jesse, Dayspring, Key of David, the hauntingly catching modal melody for this text was originally a plain song or chant, the earliest form of singing in the church. During the 19th century, there were a number of Anglican ministers and scholars, <coughs> such as James M. Neal, who developed a keen interest in rediscovering and translating into English many of the ancient Greek Latin, and German hymns. Neil was born in London in 1818. Poor health and church politics consigned him to obscure and low-paying positions for his entire career. A lung disease made it necessary for him to spend time in Madeira. From 1846 until his death in 1866, Neil served as warden of Sackville College, a refuge for <coughs> poor older men. The position was held before and after him by a layman. In the midst of life's challenges, the Lord provided blessed opportunities for Neil to increase his learning and to serve Christ and his people. At Sackville College, in addition to ministering to the men there, Neil established the Sisterhood of St. Margaret, a group dedicated to going to the homes of the poor and the sick and the suffering to minister to their bodily and spiritual needs. Out of this organization grew other institutions, including an orphanage and a middle-class school for girls. In Madeira, a remarkable library there enabled him to read and gather material for books he was to write later. It is said that Neil could read, write, and think in 21 different languages. And his extensive knowledge of Latin and Greek equipped him better than anyone else to create his immortal translations of hymns in those languages, such as all glory, laud, and honor, and O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, sung widely throughout Christ Church every year during Advent. Advent, beginning four Sundays before Christmas, is the season of the church year that emphasizes the anticipation of the first coming of Christ to earth, and for centuries, faithful Hebrews looked for their Messiah with great longing and expectation, echoing the prayer that he would ransom captive Israel. Truly, our hearts rejoice with God's people of all ages when we realize that the Christ, the Messiah, did come over 2,000 years ago and accomplished redemption for Adam's hopeless race. Yet we wait with the same urgent expectancy as did the Israelites of old for the piercing of the clouds, his second advent, when the victory over sin and death will be final. Let us now join together in the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
from Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. The hymn, Awake, Awake, for Night is Flying, was written by Philip Nikolai. The translation is by Catherine Winkworth. The service book and hymnal and the Lutheran Book of Worship, our red book and green book respectively here, each contain over 25 translations by Winkworth, a translator of German hymns whose English versions were faithful to the text and spirit of the original, as well as good English verse. Born at Eli Place, Holborn, London, in England in 1829, Catherine was a devout and well-informed woman who devoted much of her energy to the higher education of young women. She served as governor of the Red Maids School in Bristol, promoter for Clifton High School for Girls, and, and as a member of Cheltenham Ladies College. Winkworth's well-known translations include, Now thank we all our God, and praise to the Lord the Almighty. Other Advent hymn translations include, Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates, which we will sing later in this service, and comfort, comfort ye, my people. The original hymn text of Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying appears to have grown out of the contemplation of the contrast between the sorrows of earth and the prospect of the joys of heaven. In 1597, the bubonic plague raged in Una Westphalia, where Nikolai was pastor more than 1,400 persons died from the terrible pestilence, as many as 30 in a day. From his window, Nikolai saw the almost continuous funeral processions. He wrote out his thoughts based on his search of the scriptures and published them for the good of others, that they might be comforted. Among these writings was this hymn. The first stanza speaks about the inexorable flight of time, the second about the joy of the coming bridegroom, and the third about entering the pearly gates to join the innumerable throng who sing eternal praises to the Lamb. 
I invite us to prayerfully hear and <coughs> contemplate the music and words of Wake, Awake, for the Night is Flying as we listen to the Zion Ladies Ensemble. Oh, <laughs> 
This reading is from Revelation, the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. The hymn, Rejoice All Ye Believers, was written by Laurentius Laurenti. The translation is by Sarah Barthwick Findlater, daughter of the manager of the Northern British Insurance Office. Sarah was born in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1823. She became the wife of the Reverend Eric John Findlater, pastor of the Free Church of Scotland in Lochernhead, Perthshire. And their family, although poor, was later described by one of their daughters as a very happy one. With her sister, Jane Borthwick, Sarah Findlater prepared a volume called Hymns from the Land of Luther, to which she contributed 53 of 122 translations. Laurentius Laurenti was cantor and director of music at the Lutheran Cathedral in Bremen, Germany, to which position he was appointed in 1864, uh, 1684. A good musician, he is also regarded as perhaps the best hymn writer of the pietistic school Altogether, he wrote 150 hymns based on the Gospels for the Sundays and festival days of the church year. Rejoice, All Ye Believers was written for the 27th Sunday after Trinity and is based on Matthew 25 and chapters 20 and 21 of Revelation. The hymn speaks of rejoicing on the part of believers because the bridegroom is coming it speaks also of the joy at the prospect of spending eternity around the throne of glory after the sorrows and crosses of this earthly life are over. Finally, there is the prayer that the Lord may appear soon with his full redemption. Let us join now together with congregation and with choir in Rejoice, All Ye Believers.
first reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And a reading from Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who, heard it, all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Lo, how a rose air blooming is a familiar and beloved Advent hymn. The hymn's origins may be traced back to the late 16th century in, in a manuscript found in St. Albans Carthusian Monastery in Trier in the original German, Es ist ein Rose entsprungen. The original stanzas focus on Luke 1 and 2 and Matthew 2. Theodore Baker, who lived 1851 to 1934, provided the most commonly sung translation of stanzas one and two in 1894. Born in New York and educated in Leipzig, he is remembered primarily for his monumental bio biographical dictionary of musicians, the first edition appearing in 1900 with subsequent editions continuing to the present. The origin of the image of the rose has been open to much speculation. For example, there is a legend that has it that on a Christmas Eve, a monk in Trier found a blooming rose while walking in the woods and then placed the rose in a vase on an altar in front of a statue of the Virgin Mary. Some Catholic sources claim that the focus of the hymn originally was on Mary, who is compared to the symbol of the mystical rose in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, which reads, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. It has been suggested that at a later date, Protestants took the hymn, altering its focus from Mary to Jesus, citing Isaiah 11.1, 1, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Some controversy arose as to the original German word in the first line of the stanza. Was it Rose, as in Rose, or Reis, which in German means branch? A third passage from Isaiah in the 35th chapter, verse 1, suggests a stronger biblical basis for the image. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom 
as the rose. Let us now hear and contemplate this traditional hymn as the ladies ensemble sings it. reading is from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. 
Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates, was written during the Thirty Years' War. During this tumultuous time, Georg Weissel, a theologian and musician, served as the pastor at the Alt Rosgart Church in Königsberg, Germany. He describes a particular day when the townspeople were seeking shelter in the church during a particularly heavy snowstorm. Weissel witnessed the church sexton, a friendly man with a very good sense of humor, opening the church doors with a deep bow, saying, Welcome to the house of the Lord. Here everyone is welcome, whether you are royalty or a day laborer. And shouldn't we be going out into the streets to gather everyone, wherever they are, who would like to come inside here? Indeed, the gate of the King of Kings stands open today for everyone. Weissel turned and thanked his sexton for an inspiring sermon. Later that evening, he wrote this beloved Advent hymn. Lift Up Your Heads is a hymn of victory, celebrating the triumphal entry of the King of Glory based on Psalm 24. In the first stanza, we are told that the King of Glory is at hand. The second stanza describes his nature the third speaks of the joy that exists when he is near. And the fourth stanza is a prayer for his coming with all that implies for time and eternity. May we together and with the ladies ensemble sing the inspiring words of this beloved Advent hymn. 